How was your trip to Colorado? She comes home next week. Yeah, I'm not Thanksgiving, so no. Gotcha. Only like what the cost of uh, you know a pin test was. Hey guys, so welcome back to my YouTube. It's been a little bit of time since I have done YouTube, um, but. If you follow me on social media, you've seen I've been prepping for shows and I've actually just got done competing at two different shows. So I did East Coast uh, November 5th and then I did Eastern, which was the very next week, um, which was this last weekend. So this video, I kind of just want to go over like, we're going to go over a recap of the shows, um, what my critiques were. Um, things that we did differently, how to improve, and then what we are doing going into the next two weeks leading up to the big show, which is Nationals. So before we hit the gym and go meet with Bronco and go over like what my critiques are and stuff, I'm gonna just, I need to put together um, my meals, my pre-workout meal, then my post-workout meal, because I'll probably be there for a little while. I have to take a phone call afterwards. Um, get the dogs squared away and then kind of go over what I'm doing now. So I have a pre-workout meal I'm going to go ahead and put together. Um, I've been training usually about two-ish o'clock and we've been keeping my, my workouts a little bit more condensed in time. Um, so my pre-workout meal I'm going to go ahead and put together and I'm going to go ahead and put together my post-workout meal after that. But pre-workout meal. As you can see now, my entire fridge is very, 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 very plain. Um, pretty much just chicken, egg whites, only fish, dogs, chicken, and then asparagus for my greens, onions, mushrooms, and these babies. This is a new company. They're called Cure Nutrition. I actually just signed with them. So it's pretty much like an overall like health and wellness, well-being company, you know, as like things have transitioned from like physically go, 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 go. And a lot of different supplement companies like Whole One, which is my, you know, one of my sponsors. It's more like physical movement and doing this and doing that. This is more like mental clarity and mental focus and mental enhancement and things like that because now we've switch, I feel like we've switched to like such a virtual world. Um, keeping your focus and stress down and everything else, like it's really come into play. So a lot of different kind of nutritional aspects to what this company does. So a lot of like CBD, mushrooms and things like that just to help overall. Brain stimulation and this one tastes phenomenal. I have all of my meals written out so i just follow everything so my pre-workout meal is 230 grams of egg whites and then on my non-leg days i have 23 grams of cream of rice so i've really been switching to like simple protein sources carb sources fat sources just so i know like exactly what the macronutrient breakdown is on each and every one of them so my pre-workout meal is that, and I'll go ahead and put together my post-workout meal as well, which is gonna be chicken and asparagus. Lovely asparagus. So. And I just got off a meeting, which I guess you guys saw. Oh, it's chilly in here. And I got a new skillet for anybody who's making fun of my orange one that had all the crap around the top. All right, so 230, I back pour everything or back measure or whatever. So. Alexa, what's 230 minus 169? 230 minus 169. Don't judge me, I do do this now. So now that like my body fat's down, I'm literally cold all the time. Not to mention that New York City is, what, like 40 degrees outside now? And then my cream of rice right now. Water. 
Told you, I do much better making my own meals when you're not around and then the camera's not in front of my face. My rice doesn't get anywhere, I'm fine. Can't lose my carbs. And then as well, I put a couple of drops of my stevia. This is like the one sweetener, so I've cut out all artificial sweeteners. I don't, I'm not doing any sort of like protein shakes or anything like right that right now just because like it can attribute to like bloating um cause you to hold on to water fake sugars can um stevia does not um so that's kind of just i've been using the drops and it makes everything taste still really good um so now that everything's really simple it's not like as fun but i try to like add like you know the green onions and stuff like that just to like give a little bit of flavor to my palate one of the reasons why I signed with the Cure Nutrition um, is because obviously you guys have seen my dogs in all of my videos and they are a sucker for treats and food and I cook all their food and I'm all about like health for them as well. Um, so I've been doing like these CBD infused dog treats just because they're like my dogs have like such high energy um, and they have like separation anxiety when I'm not here. Um, so I have noticed that just giving them a little CBD, it kind of, it does chill them out, calm them down. And then they also have a dog product that is their full spectrum, like CBD oil. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I actually use this myself and I just put a little bit under my palate and it has helped me like relax. It de-stresses me. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's been like a really, really, really good supplement for both myself and my dogs. And I tried your dog treats as well, didn't I? So, I recommend it. You want it, Ben? You want it? He's sitting. Sit, Max. I haven't tried their treats. And they don't taste bad. They don't have any sugar in them, so they're actually pretty good. Don't judge me, guys. I'm hungry. You see, on the back, they're like organic oat flour, organic molasses, organic oat bran, organic coconut oil, and then full spectrum hemp extract. Less than 3.3% THC. Don't judge me. So I literally licked the ball. My only sense of real happiness. So for this meal, I have 100 grams of chicken and then 100 grams of asparagus. So what I've been doing with my chicken lately, to make it taste pretty good, is I've been like cutting it up and letting it marinate. Uh, so what I've been doing is I've been taking my chicken, chopping it up, adding apple cider vinegar to it. So apple cider vinegar, I usually take a shot of this in the morning, but it's great for digestion purposes. But also if you marinate your meat in apple cider vinegar with whatever like seasonings or sauces you want to add to it it really like helps bring out the flavor of uh the the seasonings that you're adding to the meat so i've been doing the apple cider vinegar and then i've just I've been adding honestly just rosemary i was chopping up chives and putting it into that and letting it soak but i've been waiting now and like what letting it actually like cook in the skillet with it so i'm gonna get a little bit of post-workout carbs so all the carbs that you're seeing in this video, it's all the carbs that I get in a day right now. I try to make my meals look as tasty as possible. So I'll let those cook and then I'll shove that in the skillet. And then I'll measure everything else out. And whatever's left, I give to them, as you can tell. I'll do 50 grams of mushrooms. And then I'll do 50 grams of onions. And then leading into like peak week, it actually itself, that's when we'll switch out everything. And we'll go just all my vegetables, we'll switch to asparagus. I'm still keeping some asparagus in my meal just for the sake of being a little bit of it consistent. Probably won't do a full 50. Last minute, I'll throw these in to cook those. Might not look so appetizing, but I promise it's phenomenal. Uh, I'm just gonna get 100 grams. Puppers, you can have the rest. Ooh, 
Hot. All right, post-workout meal is complete. Pre-workout, so I'm still keeping in a little bit of supplementation, just some creatine and like citrulline malate, um, just to get be able to continue to con keep a pump in the gym. I don't like carrying around my gallon. I don't want to look too much like a quote unquote bodybuilder, so. chooses what winner wants. Yeah, Simple but, as that. But it, and yeah, she can't wrap her mind around it because she lost. Simple as that. Yeah, but we didn't even put any kind of like bearings. It's like, oh, I get to pick what well, I want. I mean, it's like, it's what, what, if something. I would have won, I would have made you put a wig on. Okay, see, that's reasonable. And we'll walk around naked and with a no, wig on. Uh, no, please keep your clothes on. At my show. There you go. See? With a vote for summer shirt on. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is going to be, um, so we're going to cover the entire body in our hip workout. We have three rotations, but each one is going to be dedicated to one body part. So we're going to start with shoulders, hair, do some cardio pieces and some multi combat exercises, and then we're going to go into the back, and then we're going to finish a little bit with the like posterior chain. Um, in summer's case, just mostly clothes. Yeah. So three rotations, two times each, one minute in between sets, three minutes in between rotations. So yeah. it goes pretty quick. Um, We're and uh, down and about we'll talk hour. about this a little bit later, but it's been very uh, effective um, coming into these last two shows. But anyway, we'll cover that. Uh, After we'll cover the that workout. Later. Yeah. gym one where like he's on the stair he's showing me how to like do the uh, walking lunges on that stair mill but I was like stop doing it and I guess everybody probably thought I was being mean to you but he had actually just torn his IT band and he was trying to show the camera you guys and me how to actually perform that exercise hey, so no, that's why no, I was yelling at him no excuses no. That's why I, do, I do better when I'm yelled at anyway me too so be meaner Ha, <laughs>
this is way harder than it looks. You're contracting every single yeah, from your muscle, calves. chest, back, shoulders, calves, back, entire posterior chain, and then it's working shoulders. Yeah. And then the following week, she did the Eastern USA Championships. So the, the critique from the first one was that she came a little bit flat, maybe. I didn't notice so much, but it's about what judges think. Um, and then number two, that obviously we had to bump up the conditioning. So now, it's important to mention that first show was not really even planned. We kind of jumped in for someone to feel the stage, to get those first jitters out. It's been a while. Uh, and just so we can perfect our process a little bit more coming into nationals, which is obviously the most, most, most important thing. We made some adjustments um, as, far as, as far as training, which, you know, obviously I will talk a little bit more in detail. In order to bump up her conditioning, yet to keep everything the way we wanted to keep. So we took an approach where she trained still per body part. So we had our shoulder day, however we incorporated some, kind of like the first rotation today that um, you guys will see there's still a lot of shoulder content and there was a lot of hip component to it because obviously paired up with cardio. The most important thing is traditional cardio wisdom says keep your heart rate at about 70% of your max. For most people that's in that 120 to 130 uh, beats per minute because at that point 90% from every calorie burn comes from fat. That's the traditional approach here approach was we don't have a lot of time, so this is not, you know, strategy for two months or three months, so we, what we had to do, we had to basically switch gears quick, and that's exactly what we're doing. That's why she was doing 20 second intervals within a three minute um, time spent per machine. So we obviously combined uh, rower, we use bike, we use treadmill, we use stair step, work, et cetera, et cetera. So basically the best uh, way to compare it would be if you're driving a car on a freeway and you put it at 75, 80 miles per hour, you get the best mileage, right? So in order to burn the most, this is stop and go. This is like a race. 20 seconds go, 20 seconds easy. And then the similar approach taken when she is doing her uh, strength part of a hit, where we would change pace, we would change range, etc., etc. So everything, so her body doesn't adjust, which means it would burn more calories in order to figure it out what it needs to do. So that was kind of approach with training. We still kept some, um, if you want to call it, just isolation workouts where we focused on glutes and shoulders yeah. mostly. Uh, and then we paired it up with these hits that I believe brought her conditioning better. And yeah. then especially given the amount of time that we had. Yeah, so we started the peak week for East Coast at like 1.38 and we came in on show day at about 1.35. And then with the one week turnaround saying come in leaner, um, it was a little bit of like a, whoa, we need to get leaner if we're gonna you know, get better for the next show. So we bumped up the intensity, we did a couple of those different hip workouts. And then we ended up coming in a pound leaner. We came in at about 134, give or take a half a pound. Um, and so I overall think that those hip workouts really, really, really helped me. 
Um, the one thing I will say though is a one week turnaround time for a lot of people, if you're not conditioned where you need to be, can be very uh, detrimental. And I will say for, in my head, for the week turnaround time, I was just like, oh my God, I have to get leaner, I have to get leaner. And he was like focusing on summer, we gotta get leaner, but like you gotta stay full. You know, you gotta make sure you keep your size because nationals is the overall goal and like you wanna look your best there. Um, so prioritizing the hit with a little bit more rest and recovery, um, I think was very, very yeah, important. Yeah, absolutely. So, so there are basically two things when it comes to not just bikini, but if you, if you look at the sport of bodybuilding in general. One is the structure, two yeah. is condition. So, Structure cannot be changed in the last three weeks, right? That's something, first of all, that it's genetically predetermined for a large measure. But then two, something that we do during winter training, right? Where we can manipulate the weight, where we have all the possible food and all the possible strategies available just because competition is so far. So this is not about structure on summer. Um, I personally believe that she's structured exactly the way a pro bikini competitor should be. Um, I believe that she's matching top to bottom. Uh, we work, we spend the whole year working on evening out, especially her quads with glutes, with upper body. So um, I would really like to hear any opinion. I think that she's well balanced. I think she's matching. I think she is exactly where it needs to be. What needs to be done in what we have two and two, two weeks? Exactly two weeks. Like two, yeah, it's on Friday. That's oh, exactly yeah. right. I think that if we keep everything the same and we get the body weight in a lower 130s, if ideally 130 point maybe something, um, I think that conditioning will follow uh, because again, this is not pure bodybuilding, it's still bikini, it has its specific requirements on... And that's a fine line yeah, that people it's, don't it's understand. A very, it's a very fine line. So I believe that if we can get there body weight wise, I think the conditioning will follow and that she will look exactly the way she needs to look like yeah. um, to, to be um, exactly what judges want to see there. And of course, you know, our big goal all year has been to win and to, to turn pro. Yeah, and the thing is too, in a picture just to show from our difference from 2020, what me stepping on stage in 2020 looked like versus 2022, we put on so much size. I was really, really lean in 2020 but I was very small and compact. Now, working with you, like we've put on a significant amount of size. And what was what was your weight there? Like 127 ish, 127. Um, so over the course, of the day, we'll see what I come in at. Obviously, TBD. But um, just you know, bringing my fullness that I have this time around with that level of conditioning. Um, and finding that perfect balance, and that's really what bikini is. It's not being too hard, it's not being too soft, it's not being too full, but it's not being too flat. And there's a fine, fine, fine line in finding that perfect set point for each individual person. So um, that's where bikini is very subjective, but it when, is. You, when you explain it that way and you look at the people who are winning, it's it, it explains is. itself. And, uh, you know, I firmly believe it is about, so for all the ladies out there saying, you know, I'm too short, I'm too round, or I'm too tall, I'm too lean, it's about your physique that yeah. best fits your frame and what you bring to the stage. And as you saw, we had probably the last five years, we had five Olympia winners that couldn't be more different one from another. Each one of them special in their own way. So again, if someone is round, don't try to be long and lean. That will never happen. Just perfect what you have. So play the hand that you've been dealt because obviously it can be manipulated, it can be changed to a certain point, but perfect what you have. Right. Specifically in Summer's case, you know, she is more on a nice curvy round side. So our idea from the get-go was how do we take that roundness and we sharpen it and we elongate it a little bit so she's basically having characteristics of the both. So she has the nice curve all around through her physique, yet it's elongated to the point where it needs to be. And you can see some pictures, uh, hamstrings are nice and long, quad lights are nice and long. She opens up perfectly on top as far as the lead opening, shoulders are capped and popping. So I really don't see anything on her physique that I would even, even if I, if I had a magic wand that I would change um, as far as structure, but again, to stress out, conditioning, 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 but then not to run her into a ground, but just to get her to that 
fine balance point so we can be exactly the way we need to be and exactly the way judges want us to be um, at nationals. Because it's, uh, you know, like any competition, not just nationals here, it's about you will have how many, five judges there? How many will judge? Seven. 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 I think. And the highest and lowest come off. I think nine. Off. Yeah, maybe nine and highest and then lowest highest and lowest come off. So it's basically your faith is with seven or nine people and their subjective opinion right there. So obviously these are people who have been doing this for a very, very long time, and we rely on their um, expertise and knowledge and um, the tenure, if you want to call it in this sport. But it basically boils down to what they think. So that's why. Even on pro stage, it happens to say, oh, this judge loves harder look. This judge likes softer look. Um, and that's, you know, everyone has a preference. I have my ideal body. However, there are many variations out there. So basically, in short, we just try to perfect what Summer has genetically. Um, and then maybe add just a little bit. I, I know it's, it's hard to say someone can be round and long, but that's basically what we are um, trying to do. And let's see in two weeks, you know, I'll, how close we can uh, we can get to that? Let me ask you a question. Okay. We changed we changed a lot of things, obviously, from our traditional way of training. So, how do you feel? How did your body feel going through? Let's say let, let's start from three weeks ago, peak week of the first competition, week between, post week, and now coming into the last two. So, the first week, like he said, the first peak week, like. I was so just like going with the flow, I was excited to get on stage, perfect stage presence I thought, no mess ups, uh, I loved my hair, the way that I was done, I loved everything about it. Um, even that night I felt so confident on stage, like that was huge. And then to turn around and get the critique, it, it's a little bit, you can always make improvements, right? You're never going to be perfect. You can always, you're always going to have imperfections. You're always going to have things you can work on. Um, but hearing that in one week turnaround time, like I said, it is like your flight or fight response like turns on. It was like, oh God, I have to get more conditioned. So I was like, we have to brand this up. So with that being said, there's a fine balance between picking up the intensity and then balancing that with rest and recovery um, and that's something I struggle with um, so we bumped up the intensity um, significantly those first couple of days because I knew I only had you know Monday Tuesday Wednesday and then we try to rest and recover on Thursday Friday so my body can like relax rejuvenate and look fresh on stage um, however I do think that we push like I push a little bit too much not you me me being very very competitive I wanted to bring my best and that was the last time Steve was going to see me before I got on national stage um so in that time you know trying to focus those last two days on rest and recovery when my body was just a little bit I would say frazzled from the first couple of days um I wasn't as like confident going into that show and obviously I think my stage presence kind of showed a little bit um i think my hair could have been done a little bit differently because in bikini as well like everything plays a part he does all my training he makes sure that my muscle bellies look perfect and then you know my coach does my diet and my cardio making sure that you know goes the hand in hand and then it's all on me to make sure that like you know my tan looks good my hair my makeup everything so all of that comes into play um so there were a couple things that i would have fixed around the hair um and where it was placed and I tripped on stage. I'm a great poser, but guess what? Even the but, best, but like, you came back. Oh, you could never tell. Back. Yeah. Yeah. It was um, it was hard for us, and I was sitting maybe in a what third row, and I could barely even notice because she's oh, so really? good. Yeah, you oh. have so much experience. So even when you make a mistake, you make it into Boom. yeah. You just switch it instead of being like, yeah. oh my god, I just tripped. No, you just continue going. Yeah. But the girls, uh, the girls who placed ahead of me. So back up a little bit. So at the first show. I placed second. Everybody was asking. I placed second, um, and I'll post a picture. You can see the picture. <laughs> and then at the second show, uh, I ended up placing fourth at that show. And that was, I would say, the the caliber of girls at that show. There was a lot more girls. Uh, the caliber was really, really good. The girl ended up winning. Um, she was great potential in the sport. I don't even know what her name was. Uh, but the girl who won my class ended up winning me overall. But when it comes back to it, like I don't get demotivated by looking at other people um, because I've been in this sport so long, I have learned 
you have to focus on yourself and you have to bring your best self. And if you can bring your best self, that's really all you can. That's all you can look to do. You can't have anybody else's genetics. Yeah, I want other people's glutes or other people's shoulders or like, you know, fullness or whatever. But like, I have what I have and we're perfecting what I have. And that is most and important. And I would and say that's the biggest message. Um, huge, huge. Have. You cannot compare yourself we to all other people. Have, yes, absolutely. We all have what we have, so let's just perfect what you have and what fits best for the frame. So, you know, we always look in our own lane. Um, you know, at this point, winning or being second, it's completely irrelevant coming into these last two weeks because it's all about nationals. Um, who shines there, who brings it there. On that day. Yeah, on that day. And you can be on one day and off the next. Absolutely. And that's why the last couple weeks, Every single thing comes into play, like what, where you're, where you're relaxing, where you're eating, who you're spending your time with, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the stress that you're taking on from other people. That's a big, big, big player. Um, it's hard to manage because that's life. You can't stop life just to. Yeah, but I, uh, we chose these shows so we can basically correct all these mistakes that we have. Um, we're all human, you know, even though with all the experience, things do happen, shows are late. Uh, it was extremely cold. Oh my God, Easterns, I was so cold that I kept my jacket on the they entire were, time. Yeah, you couldn't even were, get a call. They were ladies that were basically, you could see them shaking. I was shaking and on stage. Were, and That's were, why I ended up fall, tripping on stage. Yeah. I was so cold that I couldn't even get more. Why I picked up a lot of them just literally shaking there for, for 10, 15 minutes waiting. Um, so, but that's reality of the show. You know, it is going to be late. It's going to be too hot. It's going to be too cold. It's going to, a lot of things are going to happen. So that's the beauty of this sport. Um, and it's on all of us, trainers, coaches, competitors, even on pro side. Stay ahead of that. To stay ahead of that, to, to keep, keep your mind sharp, to adjust, to adapt. Um, and so anyway, we did a lot. We learned a lot. I think we're coming to nationals very confident. She had a great workout today. She had a really good week. I'm going to push her big time uh, next two weeks. So, you know, we have our plan and I feel really good. About it. I hope you do too. So that is my wrap up from my shows and stay tuned for nationals. Yeah. See you in Florida.